Thank you. Mr. Hendricks, uh, I asked uh, Mr. Gillum and Holcomb earlier uh, because I think it's important that you put the particulars out there. So through your apprentice uh, approach, uh, number one, you said no debt. I think that resonates more loudly than almost anything could for especially parents that have, you know, been misguided along with their kids along the way and end up with debt and maybe nothing to show for it. So why don't you explain what that range of starting wage would be, pay through career, and maybe the benefits that go along with it. Um, I think that's what the public needs to hear because the numbers that I heard earlier would be associated mostly with four-year degrees. Uh, go ahead. Can you expound on that? Absolutely. Thank you, Senator. We have two programs in our apprenticeship, one for the electrician, one for the uh, low-voltage technician. And since we're talking about the broadband arena, I'll focus on the low-voltage technician. Their starting wage is nearly $16 an hour. So they're making $32,000 a year on the check. Their benefits are another $9 an hour to start. So we're talking an $80,000 job out of the gate, day one, on the job. A technician can earn up to, as they turn out and become journey workers, they can earn well over $50,000 on the check and another $12 in benefits. So we're talking over a $100,000 job in four years. I don't know if you can find a college degree where you can start at 60 and go to 104 years. I think that message that you just have given us and what Mr. Gillum and Holcomb talked about, that needs to resonate because it's not only in broadband, it's across the rest of the spectrum. I remember back when I was in our state uh, legislature, um, 60 to 80,000 jobs out there, high demand, high wage, carried those same characteristics. And the main barrier was that you were not given honest um, kind of discussion about it, especially early on um, in middle school and especially before you hit the ground running in high school. Dr. Lee, uh, I was reading uh, your kind of affirmation of what I just said. Um, Unlike from your think tank, your studies, um, is this broader than just broadband when it comes to what we need to do to revolutionize um, a better guidance, a better education for our kids in light of the fact that we're wrestling with $1.6 trillion in student debt? You know, I love that question for a variety of reasons, Senator. One, because I think that there's this opportunity of transferable skills. So what I like about this panel is that I am probably the only broadband geek sitting in the square center of it. But you do need electricians and you need other types of occupations that are going through apprenticeship programs that will apply to broadband infrastructure. But more importantly to your question, one of the things that we do have with this $1.2 trillion investment is we have uh, incentive for demand and supply and demand. And I think we will miss opportunities, for example, if states don't think about ways in which they can incentivize the workforce, contribute to some of the education initiatives that you've discussed, find ways to promote apprenticeships, because they're going to have to build the architecture within their local communities. And we need companies like Mr. Holcomb's to have more than 25 employees to do so. And so the more that we can incentivize and use this body of money as a way to encourage the workforce, I think we'll have better results in the end. And that goes back to, I think, something you said and the ranking member, with the chairman, which is strategic and calibrated. And the other point I'm hearing, too, this isn't complicated. It's simply uh, getting uh, businesses involved to where they are going to do things like Toyota has done down in southern Indiana, close connections with the local school districts. Um, begs the question here, too, not only the $1.6 trillion in debt that we've amassed, but the fact that we're heavily in debt as a federal government. And a lot of this can be done at the grassroots level and hardly cost anything, and even to the opposite effect, have a return on investment with very little other than a recalculation, a reorientation. And those are the things that excite me because so often you get grandiose plans that come from here that 
you have trouble paying for, uh, currently borrowing money to spend it, and this is within our grasp at the grassroots level. Mm -hmm. That concludes the questions that I have and, uh, and really enjoyed the conversation with all of you. Thank you very much, Senator Braun.